Good morning, LRC family and friends. Once again, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I dare you to come on in the room and put those sanctified hands together and begin to open up your mouth and give God some glory, give him some praise, give him a worship this morning that is due to him. Begin to open up your mouth and saturate your home, saturate your car with a praise this morning. Come on, open up your mouth. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you thank him. Come on, bless his name this morning. He's worthy. He's yet worthy of this praise this morning. He's yet worthy of the glory this morning. He's yet worthy. He's worthy this morning. Come on, open up your mouth and let's saturate your place with praise. Wherever you are, wherever you may be, I dare you just to stop doing what you're doing. I dare you to lift up your hands. I dare you to open up your mouth. I dare you to begin to thank him. I dare you to begin to thank him. I dare you to begin to praise him. I dare you to begin to worship him. Come on and open up your mouth. Come on and open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and give him some glory. Open up your mouth and give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Come on and let's just worship right here. Glory to your name, Jesus. We honor you, God. We love you, God. Come on and just saturate the place. Begin to open up your mouth. I promise you, whatever you're going through, if you begin to just worship him, I guarantee you that he'll come in that situation and he'll deliver you out of it. He'll bring you out of it. He'll bring you over it. He'll pick you up out of it. Come on, I tell you to worship this morning. Open up your mouth and worship him this morning. Open up your mouth and worship him. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy this morning. He's worthy. Psalms 145 says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day I will bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. This morning I dare you to give every praise unto him. Every praise that you can give unto the Most High God, I dare you to give it unto him on today. From the bottom of your belly, I dare you to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I dare you to give God some glory this morning. Come on and put your hands together. And let's get on one accord this morning. You know this song, sing with me.
I guarantee if you give God this praise, if you give God this worship, if you give God this hallelujah, I guarantee you he'll be there right at your side. He'll be right there ready to heal, ready to deliver, ready to turn it around, ready to break the chain, ready to break that stronghold that has come against you in your life. I dare somebody to give him a praise right there. Come on and give him a praise in this place. I need some crazy praises in here. Come on and give him a praise in this place. Come on this morning. We came to give God some glory. We came to give God some honor. We came to worship him on today. He's worthy of this glory. He's worthy of this praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we honor you on today. God, we worship you on today. God, we send up this glorious praise on to you on today, God. Because there's none like him nowhere. Hallelujah. I heard this song as I was standing here this morning. And I hope you all can just worship with me this morning. You are Alpha and Omega. Come on. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha, you are Alpha, and Omega. Worship this morning. to be praised he's worthy to be praised he's worthy to be praised he's Alpha and Omega he's the beginning and he's the end and he's worthy to be praised Come on, we're going to sing it one more time. 
and lift your voice in this place. Come on, come on, come on. We give you all glory. Come on, come on. We give you all glory. One more time, come on. Hallelujah. We give you glory, God. 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 Come on. We give you glory, God. Move in this place, God. Move in your place, God. Move in your place, God. Move in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus. We decree now, God. Right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray with me, saints. We decree in Jesus' name that you're going to move, that you're going to heal, that you're going to save, that you're going to cause transition. In the name of Jesus, we decree it so. Devil, you have no hold on your people. And we decree in Jesus' name by the blood of the Lamb that we have victory in the name of Jesus. Every contrite spirit, in the name of Jesus, we are the lifter of our head, God. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Every heart mended, every heart broken, we will decree in the name of Jesus that every heart is fixed. We know that your heart fixer and you are mind regulator. And we decree in Jesus' name that you're going to heal the nation. You're going to heal our land. You're going to heal our minds. You're going to heal our house. In the name of Jesus, come on, say pray. I need somebody praying right now, God. Do it for our nation. Do it for our house. Do it for our families. In the name of Jesus, every sickness is not unto death. And we decree in the name of Jesus that this affliction, that this sickness, that this condition is just for a moment. And we decree in Jesus' name that we're going to the other side. In Jesus' name, storms may rise, but we're going to the other side. Winds may blow, but we're going to the other side. Right now, right now, right now, waves tossing, but we're going to the other side. Waves coming in the ship, but we're going to the other side. Tell somebody, as I'm praying, we're going to the other side. 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 In Jesus' name. Come on, I need somebody praying. Praying, 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 praying. We need prayer warriors in the house of God. We need prayer warriors, prayer warriors, prayer warriors. Right now in Jesus' name. Somebody is in the hospital. 
right now wrack with pain but we decree in jesus name that they're coming out on the other side they're coming out on the other side we're coming out of icu we're coming out of community we're coming out out of St. Vincent's. We're coming out. Y'all ain't praying to me. In Mount of Methodist. We're coming out. We coming out. We coming out. We coming out. We're coming out. In Jesus' name. We're coming out. Out of St. Francis. We're coming out. Out of MedCheck. We're coming out. Out of emergency. We're coming out. Tell somebody I'm coming out, I'm coming out, I'm coming out, back pain, you're coming out, knee pain, you're coming out, hip pain, you're coming out, migraines, you're coming out, in Jesus' name. Oh my shot, da 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 have your way God 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 come on we gotta be on one accord somebody's life is at stake right now they got the needle they got the pills they got the knife but we decree in Jesus' name that you're going to have life and you're going to have it more abundantly. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We are breaking every stronghold right now. We breaking demonic forces right now. We breaking it in Jesus' name. We are destroying it in Jesus' name. Somebody's house has been in hostage. Somebody's mind has been hostage. But we decree in Jesus' name that you're coming out. Tell somebody I'm coming out, I'm coming out, I'm coming out. I'm coming out of this thing. I'm coming out of my sour, my sour circumstance. But I'm coming out, I'm coming out, I'm coming out. I'm Tell somebody, we coming out of this famine. We coming out of this famine. We coming out of this ease. This is. We're coming out of this ease. We coming out. Spirit of the living God, have your way. Spirit of the living God, have your way. In every house that is watching, every person that's watching, Spirit of the living God, have your way. the situation come on we gonna pray for victory God right now in the name of Jesus we got victory now we have identified the enemy we have identified the issue we have identified the condition we have identified the affliction but now God we agree in the name of Jesus we got power to tread over the enemy we got power to come over our conditions. We got power to come over our afflictions. In the name of Jesus, 
We decree peace. We decree joy. We decree life. We decree an everlasting in the name of Jesus. Come on, I need somebody to decree it now, God. In the name of Jesus, we got joy everlasting. We got peace everlasting. We got life everlasting. In my house, with my marriage, with my spouse, with my husband, with my mother, with my father, we decree it in Jesus' name. Come on, I dare you to decree it. My money may be funny, but I decree riches, joy and riches are going to be in my house. I dare somebody say, pull it down, pull it down. Come on, do a demonstration. Those that are watching, pull it down, pull it down. The only way that you won't get it, you got to pull it down. Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. I dare you to pull it down. There you go, Deke. Pull it down, pull it down. Come on, saints. Do a faith demonstration and pull it down in your house in the name of Jesus. Everything you need is by your pulling. Pull it, pull it, pull it down, pull it down. It's right there in the heavens. All you got to do is pull it down. We decree it for our house. We decree it for our house. We decree it for our house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. We bless you. Can we put the devil on notice? Every demonic, every imp, every devil, we coming for you. What you took from us, we coming back for it. You trying to take our mind, we coming for it. You trying to take our peace, we coming for it. You trying to take our life, devil, we coming back. Sometimes you got to put your own devil on notice.
I feel God. Listen, I'm not crying because God has done anything for me. I'm crying because God spoke to me and said somebody's life just got changed. Somebody's, somebody just got the healing that they need. Oh, in my spirit the life that was about to be taken by God I feel it in my spirit God says they got another chance at it Jesus 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 I don't know if it's somebody watching or somebody that that we know in our midst but somebody just got another chance y'all to get y'all to get praise for that somebody just got another chance oh glory to God Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. The Bible says in Psalms 34 that he hears the cries of his people. He said he hears the cries of his people. And we thank God that he listens to the cries of his people. We bless you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The healing is taking place right now. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me. The healing is taking place right now. Yeah, by Shadododoboshai. The deliverance is taking place right now. The renewing. Boy, I felt, felt it. I felt it right there. The renewing is taking place right now. We bless you, God. Bless you, God. Bless you, God. Heal, touch, deliver. Set the captives free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Set the captives free 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 in Jesus' name. Set the captives. Set the set. Set the captives free in Jesus' name. 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 We bless God. 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 We bless you, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. God is doing a work. He's doing a mighty work in the lives of his people. We bless God for you watching and being with us on our Sunday worship experience on today God is doing a great work and we must not come off that wall amen tell your neighbor we're not coming off the wall we're not coming off the wall we're not coming off the wall amen we welcome all of you watchers viewers visitors as well as our LIC members thank you for being with us on today share this post and share this live feed amen for what God is doing with us Amen. God is doing a great work in the ministry, and we bless God for you. Amen. Listen, as we are about to go further into our worship experience, I pray that something said and something done will be ministering to your soul and your spirit. Amen. There is a word for us in the house. Amen. Don't forget, once again, Bible study. Don't forget Bible study every Wednesday at the 7 o'clock hour. Amen. We've been diving into the word of the Jesus encounters, and it has been a blessing. Amen. Many of you have voiced your uh, excitement as well as enlightenment. Amen. By the word of God as you're watching. Amen. And we ask all of you, deacons, ministers, leaders, every person that is under this umbrella, you join in and get that word on Wednesday because it has been a blessing when we're talking about the Jesus encounters. Amen. And bless God. Amen. We bless God. Amen. We bless God for that word on last Wednesday. Amen. We want to pray 
and lift up all of you and thank you for watching. Amen. We pray that this spirit has fallen in your house, that you will receive, thus said the Lord. Amen. On today. Amen. We're all, all going to ask all of you, amen, that as you're joining in, share that button. Share that button. Invite some people in. Do a watch party. However you need to share this word, come on, join in and fellowship with us, amen, in the body of Christ. We know it's difficult, amen. It's difficult that you're watching online and you can't physically be here, but we know that your spirit is here and we bless you, God. We bless you for being a part of our Sunday worship experience. We bless God for you. Amen. So don't forget about our YouTube page. We want you to subscribe to YouTube. Amen. Catch us as well as our YouTube page, just in case you don't have Facebook. Amen. We want you, we want to catch you in all media aspects, outlets, and however we can connect with you and you can connect with us. We want you to participate in that connection. Amen. As you follow us, as you continue, God, to be uh, enlightened and encouraged by the words, amen, over this page. God bless you for watching. All of our visitors, thank you for watching as well. All right. This is a time that all of us can participate. This is a time that we sow seed into the house of God. This is a time that we give our tithe and our offering. This is a moment that I'm asking every member, every person that is under this banner of LRC. You are to tithe. You are a tither. You are a seed sower. And I'm asking that you would give like you've never given before. This is a moment. This is a moment. This is, I'm going to say that again. This is a moment that you must bring all the tithes into the storehouse. The reason why is because God is storing up uh -huh, those blessings for you. Amen. Even in the middle of all the things that is going on with this pandemic, the things that people are losing, jobs, businesses are closing. But I believe, this is what I believe. I believe that the believer is going to be sustained in this pandemic. I didn't get an amen. I believe that the believer is going to have overflow when others are lacking because we understand the principle of giving. We under, understand the principle of seed. We under, understand the principle of our tithe and offering. Can I get an amen in this house? Amen. So those that are watching, you know you're supposed to give. Mm-hmm. You know you're supposed to give. How do, we, how do we rob God? Will a man rob God? Yes, he will rob him in tithes and offerings. That's how we rob God. But here's the thing, is that how can God rebuke the devourer for your sake if you don't give unto him? That means that the devourer is running rampant and you're not protected if you're not giving unto God. I don't know about y'all, but I need that protection. Everybody, I don't know about y'all, but I need, I need, I need that, I need that protection. I need, everybody say, I need that protection. Where my money won't be ate up. Come on. My, my resources won't be ate up. Come on, church. Amen. I won't be overloaded with bills and finances and in debt. Come on. I'm, I'm talking to somebody. And if you trust God enough to sow what you have. I believe that God is going to place you in an abundance of overflow in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give unto God. Amen. Some of you haven't given to God. Some of you haven't tied it in a long time. Amen. You haven't given like you should. Amen. But we're asking all of you, come on, sow that seed. Sow that tithe. It's not that the fact that I want to get your money. I want you blessed. I want your house blessed. I want your money blessed. I want your marriage blessed. I want your children blessed. I want you to be able to get new cars. Amen. Jesus name. Man. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I want you to be able to get new cars. Amen. In the middle of a pandemic. I want you to be able to get a house and sign for it with your name on it. Oh, come on. You know what I mean? Not putting somebody else's name on it, putting your name on it. The reason why I believe that is because God is doing it. God is doing it. Listen, our niece just walked into our house, brand new house on Friday. Why do I believe that? And guess what? Many of you don't really realize over a year or so ago, over a year or so ago, God spoke to one of God and said for her, guess what? To sow, check this out. You remember this? So $5. Everybody that sows $5 into her is going to be blessed because we were sowing into, we were sowing into her destiny. Guess what? Her destiny just became manifestation on Friday. She cut the ribbon and walked into her new house, y'all. 
in the middle of a pandemic. You can't tell me God is not blessing the, feet, the, the lives of God's people. He will do it if you just trust him. But she sold. That's what she did. She, she's, a, she's a tither, y'all. She tithes. She gives her tithes and she gives her offering. And she said, oh, I got to get, I got to get my money to you, uh, Lady Carol, Auntie. I got to get my money to you. I got to get my money. Does she say it? And she will come and, and, and cash out the money and say, "This my tithes. But listen, if you believe God, you trust God. If God, if you if, if there's something that you're trying to do, I, bl I bless you that you're doing it. But here's the thing. If you give it, got to give it. That was just four words. If you give it, God will give it. He will give it. Press down, shaking together. That men will give into your bosom. The reason why I labor here is because we are we are physically separated, but we don't have to be spiritually separated. Give that tithe. Give that offering. The link is right up there. Come on, give. Come on, give. Come on, give. I know you're able to. Come on, give unto God according to how God has blessed us. Come on, let's bless our, our tithe and offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless our tithe, we bless our gift and our seed. We ask now, God, that you would allow the seed to be the overflow. Let it be the vehicle. Let it be the plant that we will be able to plant into our destiny and our future. God, we thank you for the abundance that you've given us. We thank you that, that we're able to keep the 90 and just give you the 10. And we bless you for it in Jesus' name. Repeat after me, Father, this is my tithe. This is my seed. This is my offering as I give unto you, as you have given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, that men will give unto my bosom in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, amen. Come on, you're in the hands of our music ministry at this moment. There's a word coming for you right now in Jesus' name. Whoa. 
what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. Brokenness, brokenness is what you want from me.
bless God. Amen. We bless God today. Amen. There is a word for the house. I'm not sure how this word is going to fall today, but there is a word for the house. There's a word for us. Amen. As we're diving into the word of God. Amen. Get your Bibles. Amen. Tablet, not your Bible. Otherwise, amen. We stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Amen. We stand for the reading of God's word. If you're at home, I'm going to ask you to stand as well. Come on, let's stand for the reading of God's word. I want to go to a passage of scripture. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure if this is going to be a teachable word or empower, empowerment, empowerment word or a preaching word. But however it's going to come out, we just going to flow with it. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's turn to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians. The fourth chapter. Two scriptures. Amen. Philippians is, is such is a powerful chapter and a powerful book. Amen. Uh, many of you may not understand uh, Philippians. I'm going to kind of give you a little background about what the church in Philippians. Uh, but I, I was inspired by by reading this by the church in Philippians because they had such a level of maturity uh, like none other. And I'm going to talk about that here in a moment. So let's go to verse 12 and 13. Let's go to verse 12 and 13. Philippians, the fourth chapter, 12 and 13. And let's read. This is Paul speaking, and he's writing this letter to the church. He said, I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. But here is the power statement. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your spirit rest upon my tongue at this moment. Spirit of the living God, have your way. This is a moment, God, that we are going to eat of the word, share of the word, teach the word, preach the word, be empowered by the word of God. I ask now, God, that no flesh will decrease at this moment, that you will get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Distractions, we come against you in Jesus' name. Let our, let our hands and our minds and our hearts be focused, that we be able to take notes and did not just to be uh, at a point to apply this word, but more, most of all, that we would live this word. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's people say amen. Take your seat. Take your seat in the house of God. Amen. Um, for, the last, for the last several months or the last several weeks or what have you, um, especially when we were talking about the Bible study and different things and what have you, um, there has been a powerful teaching in the, on Wednesdays. Amen. And we bless God for that word on Wednesday. Amen, somebody. Amen. The command, the exchange of command and faith. And I believe that a lot of times when we're talking about command, when we're talking about faith, there is a underlined uh, concept behind command and faith. There is an underlying, the there, 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 there's an underlying com, uh, underneath command and faith. I believe that a lot of times when we read the word of God, when we read the word of God, the word of God just is not just the enlightenment of our hearts. It is not just the encouragement that we need. But I believe that also that the word of God is the empowerment that we need. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again for somebody that needs to understand this is because a lot of times we read the word of God by not realizing that the word of God is bringing us empowerment. Mm -hmm. Because if you really think about the state of where we're in, we have so many people that are so insecure of themselves. You in, I, I, I have some insecurities. Amen. Come on. Come on. A, a, even as a leader. And let me help you with this. There were people in the Bible that had insecurities. There were people in the Bible that had weaknesses. Moses had a stutter. Come on, church. Amen. And even down to his level of insecurity, when he encountered God on the mountain and, and, and he said to, to God himself, he said, God, check this out. Who shall I say sent me? See, he was insecure of himself because he knew that he had some mess ups in Egypt. I'm going to help you all I'm setting the stage for it. I'm setting the stage because a lot of times what we need every now and then, everybody, everybody say we need a push. 
So my title today is I'm pushed to produce. I am pushed to produce. Everybody say, I'm pushed to produce. Now, the ability to embrace power and to overcome fate, fear, doubt, unwanted, and unscripted circumstances is to have confidence within yourself and the ability to overcome the circumstance. I believe a lot of times the reason why we don't overcome, the reason why we are not victors in circumstances is not because the lack of power that God has is the lack of our ability. And it's the lack, everybody say confidence. It is the lack of confidence that we have in ourselves. It is, and check this out. When we talk about declarations, when we're talking about speaking a thing and declarating, you know, making declarations over a thing. See, that's one thing to speak it. It's another thing to even act on it. But there's another thing when you got power behind the declaration. And the reason why, I'm, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me be honest. I really believe the reason why the things that have not manifested in your life is because you got word, but you ain't got power. You got faith, but you ain't got no power behind your faith. And that's the reason why you have not obtained the house that you want, because you speak in it, but you doubting on the other hand. Come on, church. The reason why you don't have that job and the reason why you don't have that education, the reason why you don't have that money, the reason why you don't have the things that you've been pressing for is because you got good word, you got good reputation, but you ain't got no substance behind it. And God is not working with nobody that has no substance. I don't know about y'all, but God every now and then will give us some substance. You know what the substance is? That's power. And every now and then, we got to tap into the power of God. And, every, and that's why even why the Bible talks about this particular passage of Scripture. It's because he was encouraging. Amen. The Apostle Paul was encouraging the church. And the thing that I love about this particular passage of Scripture, even down to the book of Philippians, check this out. The church in Philippians was without a leader. They didn't have a pastor. Apostle Paul was in a totally different country as he was writing this letter. But the Philippians had enough maturity in themselves, check this out, to have confidence within themselves to push themselves for themselves. My God from Zion. The reason why, the, the reason why most of us don't make it is because we always need somebody to push us. But every now and then you just need to push yourself. I don't need everybody to push me. Every now and then, I have to encourage myself. I have to push myself. And I have to make myself do the things that sometimes I don't want to do. I know I'm talking. I know I'm preaching. And a lot of times, we don't want to accept that. Because we always need somebody to encourage. I need a word. Well, guess what? Bring a word to yourself. David encouraged himself. He didn't go to a pastor. He didn't go to a prophet. He didn't go to a king. He went to himself. He went to his inner self and said, self, get yourself together because we got destiny to go after. That's the reason why most of us, we are so prone to go after people because we need their validation. We need their approval. We need their push. We need their power. But guess what? Is it possible that you're getting the wrong power from the wrong person? Is it possible that you're getting the wrong validation from the wrong person? Because the person that may be pushing you may be the wrong person for your purpose. I'm preaching and I'm teaching better than y'all responded. And the, and the fact remains is this, that the church in Philippians did not need a pastor, pastor to push them. They pushed themselves. That's what I love about it. Because a lot of times in the church, we got so many people in the church that we got to pump, we got to prime, we got to pull you, we got to pray for you, we got to press you. And therefore, and, th and, it, and it tires out the leader. I get tired every now and then. I have to pump and prime you. But, when, but, but, but let me say this. When God has been good to you, you don't need nobody to pump you. You don't need nobody to prime you. You don't need nobody to push you because all you got to do is think. My God from Zion, all you got to do is think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done. That's when a hallelujah going to raise up in your spirit and say, hallelujah, I thank God. I'm preaching, y'all. I'm preaching. I'm teaching. That's the reason why I love the, I love the church of Philippians is because they had enough mind to worship. They had enough mind to press. They had enough mind to understand that every now and then all I need is confidence within myself. Everybody say confidence. 
The apostle Paul was overjoyed by the, the progression and the advancement of the church. He expressed his gratitude in a thank you note to the church and their assistance in the hour of his need and use the letter, check this out, to instruct unity within the body as well as empowerment. He recognizes their, imp their improvement, but he also knows and understands that sometimes you, gotta be, you may be satisfied right here on a level, but sometimes you got to be pushed to the next level. See, the reason, why, the reason why the church and the reason why we're so complacent is because we just like being right here. Not knowing there is a blessing on the next level. My God from Zion. Oh, my God. Every now and then, you just need somebody to say, come on, baby, just take another step. <laughs> okay, I know you I know you done made that another step, but come on, baby, come on, take another step. Come on, come on. I know you just made two more steps, but, but baby, come on, make another step. I get blessed when my when my baby, my puff, amen, uh, Kyla, when she when she walks up the step because when when we go, we even count the steps for her, amen. And we say, come in, one, two, three. Check this out, four, uh huh. We got fifteen steps, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm getting, I'm, I'm taking y'all somewhere. Ten, eleven. 12, we're getting excited. 13, uh oh, we're getting excited. 14, uh oh, we're almost there. 15, and when she gets to the step on 15, she starts clapping. Thank you, thank you, Puff. You just blessed me. See, the reason why is because she realized that step one was not satisfied for her. She got happy when she made it all the way to step 15. Thank you, Puff, because many of us are satisfied on step one, but if you just get to step 15, God says that's a blessing. Come on, here we go. And a praise when you get on that level. Y'all ain't, ain't, ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Tell your neighbor, just keep on stepping. Because when you get to that level, come on, there's victory and a praise when you get to that last step. My God, thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. She just blessed me on that. <laughs> That wasn't even part of my notes. <laughs> and a lot of times we get complacent. Minister Ward, we get complacent. We get complacent. We just like right here. Just get real comfortable. Uh huh. But sometimes God says, now I know you made it on that step. That's fine. But, but, but a lot of times the reason why we don't get the blessing is because we think the blessing is on step one. Can I help? Can I help y'all? We think that, that the blessing is on step one. No. In reality, step one is the beginning to your blessing. Y'all better write that down. Step one is the beginning to your blessing. And every now and then, you just need somebody to push you. Everybody say, I need somebody to push me. So, so every believer has dormant power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you got some power. You may not think that you got it, but you, you, you really, you really got some power. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm gonna bring some scripture into it in a minute, and then we gonna we gonna continue on. I, I, it is possessed within ourselves, given by the power of Jesus Christ. Notice, and you must notice. Check this out. As 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 we go into the logistical overture of apostles introducing this post power Christ, guess what? We find it in Acts two. Mm -hmm. See, you got to let me teach y'all. There is pre-power Christ and post-power Christ. Pre-power Christ is the three-year ministry before he went to the cross. After he went to the cross, that's when he got all power. Then the all power was introduced in Acts 2 when they were, check this out. When they were all on one accord. Uh, Y'all missed it. Y'all just missed it. Y'all just, it just went over your head. The reason why we don't have the power like we had in Acts is because we're not on one accord. Because the post power of Christ is dormant in us until we get on one accord. Y'all better get this word on. The reason why the power of healing hasn't hit is because the church ain't on one accord. 
the reason why the power of deliverance has not hit is because we ain't on a one accord. But when we get on one accord, come on. The Bible says that the spirit of God came in like a mighty rushing wind. That wasn't just a wind. That was his power. That was his power. I don't know about y'all, but I need a mighty rushing wind to come in my life because I need the power of God. I need all my shot. Yeah, it will shut out. Tell your neighbor, I need, I need some power. I need some power. We got some, listen, li- listen, we got some effective devils that we're dealing with. <laughs> Come on, church. We, we, we got some effective devils. We got some devils that we ain't never seen before. I know I'm talking. We got some devils that are on political stages. I, I, no, I ain't going to get there. I'm not going to go there. Okay, but we, we got some devils, not just in the political arena, but we got devils in our personal arenas. Uh-huh, you got some devils in your house. You got some devils in your family. Come on, church. You got some devils, amen, at work, amen. That's when I mean your personal arena. We all got some devils, and we, these are some devils that we ain't never, ever seen before. Let me say it like this, and they some bold devils. I know, come on, can I get an amen? Amen. We got some bold devils. But I believe, I believe with all fervent week in my, in my spirit that God has given us a power that we can speak to that devil. Mm-hmm. We can speak to the imp. We can speak to demonic forces. Come on, y'all ain't, y'all ain't ready, y'all ain't ready. We can speak to conditions. Yeah, come on. We can speak to troubled minds. If we would just tap into the dormant power that we have. The reason why you ain't tapped in is because you're dealing with insecurities and you're dealing with the lack thinking that you don't have the ability or check this out or the capability. See, there's a difference of having ability and a capability. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Because you can have the ability to do something, but are you capable of accomplishing? Oh, come on. Come on, church. When you have a capability, that means that you have the success to overcome it. The question is, do you have the success to overcome every circumstance that comes into your life? The reason why I'm preaching this word is because we have to understand that all of us got to be pushed to produce. Can I get an amen? So there are so many kenosis scriptures in this letter that gives us the richness and the, and the, and the empowerment of Christ himself. And then not only that, I believe that a lot of times when we come to our circumstances, tell your neighbor, I have to adapt to my, to my circumstances. See, the reason why the reason why we're being defeated is because we don't know what we're dealing with. We have you have to know your circumstances and you also have to know your environment. OK, let me go to the scripture. OK, verse 12 says he said he said, I know how to be abased. I know how to abound in every in all things. I know how to be instructed to be full and hungry and to abound and to suffer need. So the thing of it is, is that you have to know and be flexible in your situation. That's one. But two, you also have to know what you're dealing with. The apostle is raising the awareness of environment in our living. The church in Philippian was not like any of the churches, such as church, the church in Corinth. They were flesh. They deal with flesh, but the church in edifice deal with, with the maturity of Christ. Yet this epistle is written to the address, the future unity of the church. When a word is taught or preached at any time, it's either given for in situations or for things to come. Okay, so when I'm teaching you about, about adaptation, that means, check this out. Every day you deal with a situation, it's going to be different from what it was last week. The reason why we're so prone, we so prone of dealing with situations and the way we deal with them is because, check this out, you're dealing with the situation as it was last week, not realizing that it changed 
from last week to the next week. So now your mental state is I'm dealing with what I dealt with last week, but not realizing that it's changed. So that means that if the situation changed, that means my mind changes. Oh, my God. Y'all just missed it. If the situation changes, that means I adapt to the situation. That means I, that means my mind changes. My heart changes. Check this out. Even my prayer changes. Y'all ain't got, y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready for this. The reason why you still talking, you still praying on the last week's prayer, not realizing that the situation has changed. So what you got to do now is not only that you got to change your words, you have got to change your declaration, but you got to change your prayer. You are dealing with a stale prayer with a new revelation. I'm teaching better than y'all receiving it. And the reason why you are still stuck is because you're still stuck on what happened last week, not realizing things have changed. And not only that, the devils have changed. Circumstances has changed. The condition has changed. So that means that you got to change. Let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Philippians, that's the first part in Philippians 2. Tell you never, you got to change. You got to know what you're dealing with. Let me help you with this. You got to know the people that you're dealing with. Woo! And too many times we are defeated is because we don't know, uh-oh, we don't know, we don't know the people that we're dealing with. I'm going to help you out today. The reason why, have you ever had a relationship with somebody and then, you thought you knew them, and then they did something that completely blew your mind. It was like, oh, my God, I never thought that you would have said or did that. It's because not only that circumstances change, but people change. Am I talking, Jonathan? So when they change, guess what? You got to change. Y'all ain't with me. That means you got to amp up your power. You got to amp up your prayer life. And let me help somebody tell you, neighbor, you got to amp up your anointing. So now we, we, come to, we come to the level of understanding. He said, I know how to abase. He said, I know how to abound. I know into all everything instructed to how to be hungry and to be full. So he's saying is, is that I know I've experienced all these things. I've experienced lack and I've experienced provision. But in, in, the same, in the same manner, just because I'm in lack and just because I'm in provision doesn't change my power. Y'all just missed it. Okay, let me help you. The thing of it is, the continuity and the consistency is not based on the circumstance of you being delivered or set free. The consistency and the continuity of you overcoming is based on your continuity of power. See, too many times, too many times, we are so adept to adjust to the situation, which is true. But at the same time, my consistency and power when I'm in lack is the same consistency of power when I'm in provision. God just gave me that word. Tell your neighbor, I got to have the same power. Because <laughs> the same power when I'm in abundance is the same power is when I'm in need. Woo! Come on, church. And, 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 and therefore, my situation is not, my blessing is not predicated on my situation my situation is predicated on me. Okay, we 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 gonna go there. We gonna go there. We gonna go there. So 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 the thing of it is, is that before when I'm dealing with the adaptation of a situation, tell you neighbor, you got there's there's a, two other things you got to do. There's two other things, and then we're gonna go to this last point, and we're gonna take this thing on out of here. Check this out. Check this out. There's another thing that has to happen in order for you to be pushed into producing power. Everybody say, remove it or defeat it. Okay. 
So, so in chapter, let me go back to chapter one. And it says, uh, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. This scripture is the embodiment of the infusion that Christ wants with the believer. So the word die in Greek, check this out, translates to this. Write this down. To perish by means of something empowered. To perish by means of something empowered. Verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 21. It says, for me to live is Christ again. So the thing of this is that there is something that the Apostle Paul had to recognize that either had to be removed or defeated. Come on, church. So, so, so in order for the believer to possess such a power, something has to be re rendered defeated or removed. The reason why for our inability to have such power behind our declaration, our declaration, and sometimes it has to be something that is pulling us from getting the power. Mm. Oh, that was good. Okay, so in us, in, in essence, okay, die. The word die, Greek, it says to perish by means of something in power. That means that something in you has to be removed or defeated. Paula, I think you got it. Okay, Some, something in you has to be removed or it defeated because the very thing that God is trying to get to you, such as the power, that's taking up the space. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I pray y'all got this. See, the reason why you haven't tapped into the power is because there is something that's taken up the space. In your spirit, in your mind, and in your life. So what do you have to do? You got to remove it or you got to defeat it. Thank you, mama. Because the reason why you ain't tapped in is because there's no room for God's power because you ain't removed something yet. You have not defeated the very thing that needs to be defeated so you can get his power. Tell somebody you got to remove it or you got to defeat it. And I believe that once you remove it, <laughs> once you defeat it, whoo, then now God can give you the power to overcome and to tread on serpents. But tell your neighbor, you got to remove it and you got to defeat it. I don't know what it is, but God knows what you're dealing with, because the insecurities that we have in the body of Christ has caused has caused weak saints in the body where we can't pray. We can't move. God can't heal. God can't deliver. God can't set free is because we have so much clutter in our life that God can't move by his power. Jonathan McReynolds said a song that he said, I, 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 I'm making room. For you, my agenda, and then let me help you with this. We have put our agenda before his power. You know what it, you know what your agenda is? You doing you going to you going to uh Pee Wee baseball on Sunday. Uh oh, you having flag football games on Sunday morning when you be when you should be watching and, and getting the word of God. Come on, church. Come on. We, we TV binging when we could be getting the word of God and getting empowerment. You have now put your agenda before his power. Tell you never, you got to remove it or you got to defeat it. So let me get to, let me get to the last verse, which is the empowerment statement, which is the power. We every, every now and then we got to have a, we got to have a power statement. Am I right about it, church? Every now and then, we got to have a power statement. Amen. Just like uh, there's a movie that I love, and I I'm not going to say the title of it because it's not appropriate, but there's, there's, there's this theme song that uh, the Wayne brothers had in this movie, and um, he had a theme song to this particular movie. Amen. I'm not going to say the name, 
Amen. I think some of you may not may know what I'm talking about. But he was a, he was a private eye. Uh-huh. He was like Shaft. They kind of made fun of Shaft. He was like a private eye and, and everything or whatever. And he was trying to get this particular villain and different things or whatever. And at the end of the movie, he had a band that played his theme song. Y'all got okay. Now you know where I'm going with this. So every now and then, if the if the center uh huh, and the unsaved can have theme song, theme song, and statements. How can how come the believer can't have a have a power statement? Okay, we ought to have a theme song and a power statement. So we're about to go into it. So let me break this down real quick. So so when we go to verse thirteen, and it says, I got to break this up in a three parts in the, in, in a trifold type of concept. So check this out. It says, I can do. All things through Christ that strengthened me. Okay? I got to break it up. Because if you really think about it, even though it is a full sentence, there are three parts to this particular passage of Scripture. Can I help y'all? Can we go a little deeper with this? Okay, check this out. So, the I, the I identifies the uniqueness of ownership to the claim of of possession. So that means I, that means I own the very thing that's about to come after my eye. Okay, what did I say? The uniqueness of ownership. So when I say I and then can brings another level of ability, which in turn brings me now to say that I can do. Okay, so the I can do is one part. That means that I, in the uniqueness of what I can do, brings me to a level of now I am at at the brink, check this out, part two of all things. I can do is one part, but all things is the second part. (laughs) Y'all going to get this in a minute. So what is the all things? The all things are the generalization of the things that that seem to be defeated in my life. (laughs) So, but you can't get to and you cannot have the completion of I can do all things without the third part through Christ. I just taught y'all some good word right there. (laughs) So the thing of it is, is that I can do, part one, all things, the generalization of who I am and what is in my life, part two, but I can't do all things unless I have a through Christ. (laughs) Okay, So, so, so tell your neighbor, I am about to produce a all things possibility. In my life, tell your neighbor, I can do it. I can overcome it. I possess the power that God has in my life. Tell your neighbor that I can do it. I can overcome it. I have the power to overcome the enemy. I have the power. To overcome the church, the serpents. I have the power to overcome every condition. I have the power to overcome those things in my life that seems to be negative, that seems to take me away from the very thing that God has given me because He's given me power, power on high, power. On high power, Holy Ghost power. Tell somebody I've got power, Holy Ghost power. I got post pipes, I got post Christ power, power to walk right, power to talk right, power to live right, power to live right. I gotta say that again power to live right. Power to speak right, power to think right. Tell somebody I got power, power, power. I'm producing power every now and then. 
I got to look at my circumstance. And when I look at my circumstance, I've got to adapt to the situation. And when I adapt to the situation, tell somebody my power has to change. Because the same prayer that I prayed last week, God has given me, he's given me new power. He's given me new perceptions. He's given me new blessings that I got to speak to the situation. And when I speak to the situation, he's going to give me producing power. Tell somebody I got it. I got producing. I got generation. Generating power. Power to speak over my life. Power to speak over my marriage power to speak over my children power to speak over my money power to speak over my job power to speak over my life power to speak over my mind power to speak over my heart power to speak over my spirit show somebody I got it but let's go to the main verse. I can do all things through Christ that can strengthen me. Let's go to the first part. I can do every now and then. You got to encourage, encourage yourself and say, self, you can do it. Self. You can overcome it. Self, you have the power. Power to overcome it. Power to do it. Power to have victory. Tell somebody I can do it. Tell somebody I can do it. Tell somebody I can do it. I can do it. What can you do? I can do all things. All things all things I can come I can do it I can overcome that situation in my marriage I can overcome that situation on my job I can overcome all things all things all things all things I can do it I can do it I can do it through Christ that strengthens that strengthens me Christ is my power Christ is my push Christ is my mechanism to get me to do it to overcome all things all things to somebody I got post power post power Christ I got his power the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, in Romans 8, we are joint heirs in Christ Jesus. That means if Christ has power, all power, tell somebody, I got, I got all power in my hands. I got all all power in my mouth I got all power in my feet I got all power in my spirit tell somebody I got it 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 tell somebody I got it I got power I got power. I got power. Let me encourage somebody. You can do it. You can do it. You just need a little push. Let me push you. Let me push you. Let me push you. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it.
But one thing you got to do, forgetting all those things behind me, reaching forth those things before me. Here we go. I push. I push. I push. I push toward the mark, the prize, the calling in Christ Jesus. Tell somebody, press for it. Tell somebody, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta press, 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 forgetting those things. Bye bye to my past, bye bye to my insecurities, bye bye. You are removed, you are defeated, and therefore, when I remove it, when I defeat it, now God can give me the power. He's given me 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 power, 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 power. Holy Ghost, won't he power? Won't he do it? Tell somebody, won't he do it? I gotta encourage somebody. You are being pushed at this moment. Put your hand on your chest and say, I can, I can do it. I can do all things. 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 Believe it, you gotta believe for yourself that you can do all things. My God from Zion, I love the Lord, and He heard my cry. I love the Lord and petition every groan, but I believe within my spirit, I believe that the saints of God has a dormant power. All you got to do is reach down within yourself and say, self, we got it. We got his power. We got his power. I can do one part, all things. Second part, through Christ. So you have to understand, it is not through you. Y'all just missed it. It's through Christ. What did he say? He said, I will make my strength perfect in your weakness. That's Bible. When you recognize your weak point, that's when God will give his strong point. Oh, my God. Thank you just for that word. That wasn't even in my notes. When you recognize your weak point, God will give you his strong point. And what is that? His power. Deuteronomy and exousia power. Okay, because there's a difference between the two powers. One power is the power of authority. <laughs> Y'all better get this. But the other power is the power of explosion. 
So what are you trying to say, Pastor? You have a dual power that's in you. Check this out. You have the power of authority to speak to a situation. Check this out. That may be out of order to the point that when you speak to it, you can explode it. <laughs> anything that is exploding, anything that has an explosion result to it, check this out, it's demolished. Y'all ain't getting there. I'm, I'm trying to help y'all. See, the thing of it is, is that when you have authority, you just don't have authority, but you have explosion power to the point that anything that is not aligned to your purpose, you can explode it. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't, still didn't get it. Okay, what I'm saying to you is, is that if it's not a part of your life, you have the power, uh oh, check this out, to demo it. Anything that's demoed cannot be rebuilt. I just ministered to y'all right there. Anything that's demoed cannot be rebuilt. Okay? What are you talking about, Pastor? The strongholds. He said he's not going to break them. He's going to destroy them. And the reason why you don't have the power is because you have not defeated or removed any of your strongholds. Mm. And if you have the capability of removing and defeating, oh, by your dudamus and exousia power, now God can come in and fill you with his power. You better use this power statement this week. I can do all things. I can do all things. Come on, say it with me. I can do all things. I I am not going to be defeated by my circumstances. I am not, I'm not going to be defeated. I got to know what I'm dealing with, but I'm not going to be defeated by my circumstances. I can do all things to, through Christ. Check this out. Here's the last part that strengthens me. Y'all forget, y'all don't forget it. We can't forget that. That strengthens me because I don't know about y'all, but has has this whole entire situation of the pandemic and all this stuff, has it weakened you just a little bit? Oh, be real. Come on, be real. Come on, be real. I know we all try to be spiritual and we try to be strong and everything, but every now and then it just takes a little hit. And that's the reason why I encourage you in the scripture, because we all need some strength. This is my last thing. A boulder is only strong when it's still compacted together. But every time a boulder takes a hit, it becomes smaller and smaller, turning it from a boulder to gravel. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm encouraging you because just because you're strong doesn't take away from the fact that you're still who you are. Because a boulder is a boulder, gravel is gravel. But the commonality in both of them, they're still rocks. What I'm saying to you is, is that some of us have been boulders broken down to gravel. But guess what? You're still a rock. It doesn't mean that you're less than who you are because life has, has overcome you. In other words, just because life has broken you down doesn't mean that you're still not a child of God. You are still a child of God. Did this word encourage somebody on today? I can do pushed, pushed. Everybody say pushed. To produce. Somebody's here watching at this moment. We're just asking that you would give your life just like I'm preaching at this moment. Give your life to Christ. This is a moment that we 
we welcome you at this moment. We welcome you. We want you to put your name on the page. We're going to reach out to you. If you say who you are and you want to give you, I know it's not traditional. I know it is not the regular way. I know, I know, I know, I know that many of you want to be here. But the thing of it is, the importance is, is that you have a covering. The importance is, is that you are connected to a body of Christ. That you're connected to a church and a pastor that's going to pray, love on you, teach you, minister to you the word of God. That's the importance. It is not about tradition. It's not about walking down this aisle. It's about putting your name on that screen. As they're about to sing, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Give your life. Come on, do it. I know. Come on. Come on, do it for me. I want to be that pastor, that man of God that's going to pray over you, lead you to the word of God, instruct you into the word of God. Put your name on that screen. Come on. Put your name, type your name on that screen. Somebody's life is in jeopardy. You got the power to do it. I can do all things through Christ. Strengthens me. Come on, my brother, my sister, their family. Come on. Come on. They're going to sing it one more time. God for you. Amen. That's an encouraging word. Amen. And on that song. And we bless God for you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. We decree that. We decree that in Jesus' name. And we thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. For watching. And amen. We're about to go into our communion service. Amen. Our portion that we're going to share into the, the bread and the wine or the juice. Man, as we are step into uh, step into this portion of our worship experience, that we remember what Christ did on the cross. And let me help you out with this: if He had not gone to the cross, there would have been no power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If He had not gone to the cross, there would have been no power. But I don't know about y'all, but I thank God that He went. Can I get an amen in this house? Amen. The blood that flows from Calvary's, from his veins. We thank God. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. Amen. Many of you didn't have the opportunity, but if you got a juice or something to drink and a piece of bread or cracker or something, amen, come on, join in with us. Amen. It's not about the traditional way of doing it. It's about doing this in remembrance. In remembrance. In remembrance. All everybody officials, everybody standing. We reverence two things, the word of God and the sacrament. This is a sacrament. This is the sacrament of the church. Amen. In addition of baptism. Okay. Two sacraments. There's the communion and baptism. We reverence those every time. So I need you to get that in your mind. It's the sacrament of the church is communion and baptism. And anytime we reverence those things, anytime we enter into those aspects, we stand in the reverence of Christ Jesus. The Bible says they were in the upper room. 
Amen. They were, as they were preparing, preparing and doing what everything they need to do, they came to the table, finally, had a conversation with his disciples, those that have been following him for three long years. <clears throat> he shared something that was very pivotal, something that was very important. I really believe at that moment, just get it in your mind. At that moment, I believe as they were sitting at the table, the disciples did not realize what was about to happen. They didn't realize. They didn't realize that he was about to be transitioned into a new dimension. As he was speaking to them, he told them, he said, I'm about to go away. I'm pretty sure many of them did not believe it, didn't, didn't understand the, the importance of that communion and that communing together. So what he did, after he's explaining that he's about to go away, he took the bread. He said, the bread is going to be the representation of my body that's going to be broken for the detriment of the saints. So he took the bread. He blessed it. He gave it. And they took it together. Then he said something that was even more important about the wine. Many of them did not even understand what he said. But in reference, he was actually quoting old scripture. Because out without the shedding of blood, there can never ever be the remission of sin. So with that being said to them, he shared that, 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 that common, common saying with them. Took the, wine, took the wine, blessed it, he gave it. And they drank together. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for what you did. Come on, can we thank him? Come on, we're about to sing that song. We're about to thank him for what he did. Come on, come on. Come on, sing it with us. for you watching. Amen. They're about to take us out here in a minute. But we pray that this word ministered to you. We pray that you got something out of the word of God. And we thank God for you watching with our Sunday worship experience. Catch us again right here at the 7 o'clock hour in our Bible study this coming Wednesday as we're about to journey into another Jesus encounter. Be blessed woman, woman of God. Be blessed men of God as you enter into your empowerment because you got to be pushed in producing. And we bless God for you. Amen. But may the peace of God rest upon you in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people say amen and bless God. Come on, let's take us out. Take us out.